Okay, the time has finally come to face the Indian traffic. Welcome fellow modern seekers. Today's video marks one of the first more educational presentations I will be offering on this channel. I've held back on certain topics for a while, partly due to some complications with the algorithm. But after reflecting, I've decided this is the direction I do want to go. If this isn't the content you're here for, feel free to unsubscribe. I'm focused on fostering a community that values quality over quantity. With that said, I need to ask everyone to approach these subjects with care, especially in the comments. Please avoid terms like the one that's on screen right now. As YouTube's algorithms often misinterpret them as promoting white supremacy, which is completely the opposite of our intentions. We are here to explore history and culture in a thoughtful and open way. I expect mature, respectful conversations. Otherwise, I'll have to remove divisive comments or YouTube may do it automatically. My goal with these educational episodes is to examine polarizing topics from an objective, observational perspective. I see beauty in the blending of cultures and migrations which highlights our shared origins. This isn't about promoting one group over another. I encourage you to join the conversation, but let's keep it respectful. The divisive speech will be removed to maintain the integrity of this space. Thank you and enjoy your presentation. You're on the right is the park. I need to find a good parking place. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I thought I would uh, drive down to Kukara Hali Lake today to take um, a little moment to continue on one of the concepts, one of the topics that I uh, mentioned or brought up also on uh, my video last Sunday. And I wanted to make this like a one take video so I can just upload this very easily and that you can have like that little supplement to that end. So I thought this is the perfect view in the background to um, have this little explanation. And what I wanted to talk about is the cyclical nature of civilizations resetting, basically. So the build-up of civilization of a civilization and uh, take down like the, the way that it ends. Because as I said, there is this Phoenix cycle that um, has been basically made known to, to me at least, and I think a li little bit more to the alternative truth or community online by Jason Brashears from Archaics. And this guy has like, an absolutely fantastic amazing story in where he actually has spent like I think 20 or 20 years in uh, prison in uh, Texas USA and there he had this super rare opportunity to get in contact with all kinds of old books that were in the library of the prison and that were like shared amongst all the prisoners and where he really got into all these chronology books. And, and he studied all these different chronologies, all these different calendars of uh, different civilizations, like the, the Mayan calendar and the uh, Anno Domini calendar, the Anus Mundi, um, and all kinds of different periodic events of, of things like objects that were witnessed uh, in the sky and basically to to get to the point 
he, by studying all these different calendars and these chronologies, he was able to determine like uh, these calendars, they always start, like they get triggered by some kind of cataclysm, right? Usually there's like this huge uh, event that basically people use as a point to start counting from of like so much time since that thing happened and the same we did with Jesus what well, was not a cataclysm but we took that as a, as a very significant point and we started to after Christ and before Christ uh, which is the Anno Dominica and we're also going to use that one because that's the one that's everybody most familiar with but basically he put all these different calendars uh, next to each other and he found out that whenever these calendars, these new calendars got triggered, it was always due to some kind of cataclysmic event. And he noticed that this periodicity of these cataclysms, once he put these different chronologies next to each other. And in several books, he did not necessarily make this up himself. The Phoenix cycle is what he uh, put as a name to it and there is like this whole story around the pyramid of Egypt the great pyramid of Egypt which has all of this calendrics inside its architecture but it's a whole story for a different time what I quickly want to get into you is like the very basic concept of this cycle of civilizations um, resetting and show like how the Indian culture fits into that, how the 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 rise and uh, build up of Vedic culture, how that was influenced. I already mentioned that there was this migration of the Indo-European civilization that were coming from um, Europe and Central Asia inside the Indus Valley, and how that kind of mixed with the Dravidian cultures to form what we know as the Vedic culture. And then millennia went over that kind of transformed it all into the Hinduism, the Hindu culture. And I put some um, articles online to, to supplement that a little bit. Right. But I quickly wanted to make like a, an easy drawing so let's take the stick and let's, uh, let's draw a little bit here on the floor. Like how these cycles uh, look like and where the different things fit in for uh, Hinduism and Vedic culture in particular. So basically you start counting where also the, the Bible starts, which is like the Genesis, like the, the fall of man, which is basically the start of this, this protocol where uh, the counting happens and then there's like cycles of like big cycles of like 552 years that repeat and um, have this cataclysm happening so if you would make like if we make like yes like three big circles and then two smaller ones in between those. Then this is kind of one of his most basic graphs that he uses, which is very easy to, to understand, which is basically the start here, Genesis, where the Bible starts, Anus Mundi Zero, and uh, the end of this protocol, the end times, which are also talked about in the book of Revelation and by the Mayans and everything. So if we have these big cycles, then this first period is what we're going to call uh, the vapor canopy period, which got ended by the, de the deluge, the flood, the big flood. So um, we had a lot of vapor basically in the atmosphere and once through some kind of cataclysm um, that collapsed and created this huge flood event which is known also in uh, biblic, uh, biblical uh, legends and by the Ark of Noah and everything. And then there's 552 years here and then there's three times 552 years in each of these bigger circles. 
and what we are going to look at is um, going to take uh, this year which is uh, 1687 before Christ and this is uh, the deluge event and basically these huge cataclysms they have as a result that civilizations need to migrate to different places all over the world and after the deluge people that that's when basically Atlantis sunk and people went into other uh, nearby places around where Atlantis got underneath the sea which uh, for example Ireland is a big place of and in Ireland a lot of the old Gaelic culture and civilization and all the uh, spirituality and myths and everything around it uh, that came from that uh, got started because of that like people fled after the flood to these uh, to, to that place and also the Gauls and uh, Galia like that whole uh, belly of Europe the the coastal side of Europe that's where these uh, tribes went to fled to so we have like the Aryans in uh, Ireland and then there is this uh, big uh, cycle of 552 years and the, and this is the uh, oh, Gaijian flood. So this is an, a big cataclysm year, 1687, where the Nile um, basically flooded, and that had that pushed all the Israelites out of Egypt. And a uh, big story came that they pushed them into the Mediterranean, to Greek Greece, where the Greece culture, after the Egyptians, the Greece culture got uh, started off of and after the Greek culture, the Roman culture, and that's how we get closer and closer to uh, where we are about now, a little bit here at the end. But we're gonna focus on this one. So I talked talk to you about like the Dravidian culture that was already placed in the Indus Valley, which is like North West India and uh, what in Pakistan right now and the Dravidian they lived like around 250 before Christ, Christ around that time so they were like living in uh, this vapor canopy world and they lived there for a very long time and around the time that the um, the Aryans started to settle in Europe and all that whole culture started to uh, develop which were the Indo-Europeans the Aryans it's uh, got triggered by this big uh, Nile flooding that people were pushed outside of like out of Israel out of Egypt into Europe and started to make people want to move away as well which started to push the Aryans the Indo-Europeans out of Europe and started to go into uh, the Indus Valley so this is where those Europeans went into India and they started to mix with the Dravidian culture and started to bring all these myths and legends that were basically developed from the vapor canopy times and uh, delivered over time, over the years, through the Druidic traditions and the uh, esoteric knowledge of, the, of those people. They continued uh, like that, to, uh, like uh, these, the, these stories, they stayed alive. Basically, that's what, what I mean. And these myths and these gods that they were uh, revering, that they were like worshipping, that's all coming from, from these older periods. And this is where basically the um, Vedic culture around this time, 1200 BC, uh, started forming and the, the Vedic culture started to kind of all over this uh, period to um, turn into like slowly transition into what we call not, what we now know as Hinduism and then there's again these uh, cycles here and then the other thing that I mentioned and, and that's probably somewhere around this time 
is where is the um, the moment that the the crown the english empire came into europe and or into india and started to colonize they call colonization and the dethroning of um, of those indigenous tribes and started to exploit them which i talked about also with from the preparation video in around the year 1764 after christ and that's like another phoenix event on that on that exact phoenix cycle event of like even smaller iterations of 138 years so this is 50 552 and then there's like smaller phoenix uh, cycles inside of that where also important things happen uh, in those years uh, within those 552 years of 138 years and on this periodicity of 138 the year 1764 lies and that's the moment where in the England started its colonization also together with the, um, the Dutch East Indian Company and that's what started the whole degradation of the civilization the Indian civilization uh, even further what pushed it even further and pushed all the the big companies that that started to form uh, and the stock exchange and started to turn into what we now know as the whole capitalist uh, system so I hope that makes uh, a little bit of sense to understand better how um, all the civilizations that inhabited these lands kind of like moved through uh, over time and where and how these different civilizations left their mark on left their mark on this amazing world and one more one last uh, thing of this is what I really want to emphasize or also hit home before we leave is that inside these cycles there's always civilizations that are like building up and being destroyed again because of these resets so the Dravidian uh, cultures that lived around these times they can be found in like the archaeological archaeological sites of the Harappa Valley and uh, Mohenjo-Daro those kinds of archaeological sites show that there were like very sophisticated civilizations living there with a lot of um, like sophisticated infrastructure and technologies like trains and sewer systems and and roads and all kinds of uh, pottery that was made like high levels of civilizations were already around those times and what's important there is to understand that it's that all these civilizations they behave in a cyclical nature instead of what we mostly getting taught and understand that we are um, developing in a linear sense in where we're building up uh, and that we now are kind of at the peak of civilization which is not necessarily the case at all because these civilizations that lived in earlier iterations they were even actually much more advanced than us and knew much more and understood much more how to work and collaborate with nature and how to use the prana and the life force energy into a, its favor and that's also why all these Vedic cultures that's really where spirituality comes into play in all of this that understanding our relationship with the planet and with source like that kind of knowledge that's that's really what spirituality is all about I believe like how we are connected how we are one with everything and, and nature and in those civilizations those earlier cycles iterations of civilization a lot of that knowledge was much more present and well known than it is actually right now so I would even dare to say that we're compared to those civilizations not even that advanced as we might think that we currently are okay i think that's uh that's probably it i hope you enjoyed it and if you like this uh, kind of stuff and want to uh, learn more about it i highly suggest 
and recommend that you go to the Archaics uh, video uh, YouTube channel, which I will put in the link below, because this guy can explain everything much better and in much more detail, and the, his story telling, telling skills are off the charts, like he's really a joy to listen to. So, that's it. Bye guys. Enjoy the view for one little bit more, and then we sign off. Join the Yours to Source email course today, subscribe to my mailing list, and ensure you never miss a step on this journey of spiritual growth. Your path to aligning with Source and discovering how it wants to express itself through you begins here. <laughs>